let's relate the viscous forces on the infinite small fluid particle to the velocity gradients. And in doing so, I'm, I'll assume that we have a Newtonian fluid. I'll get to that in a moment. Here's the original shape of our fluid particle. And let's take a look at this corner versus this corner. Now this corner can move a little bit faster or slower in the x direction relative to this corner. So let's say it's, it's moving a little bit faster. So in time delta t, this corner has moved over here relative to this corner, which means that this uh, edge gets skewed to something like that. And how much it gets skewed, in fact, that angle is given by this velocity gradient du dy. And one can understand this intuitively because if I had a large du dy, it means that this is going to move uh, you know, much faster than that. And so this, the skewing is going to be more. Similarly, I can get a skewing of the bottom edge because this corner can move uh, a little bit, let's say, faster rather than slower relative to that in the y direction. And that angle is proportional to dv dx and again, uh, or is given by dv dx. And again, we can see that intuitively because if um, dv dx was large, it means that the velocity here is, uh, is more different than that. And so this is going to move more relative to that corner. And this is, you're going to get a bigger skew. And if you add these two together, you will get the shear strain rate. This is analogous to the shear strain in solid mechanics. So in solid mechanics, you know, you have a shear strain. In fluid mechanics, you have a shear strain rate. Um, because the, the fluid is continuously deforming. So you have to talk in terms of strain rates. And for a Newtonian fluid, the, the shear strain rate, so the, you know, the, the sum of these two, and this gives you a measure of the skewing, is related to the shear. Okay, so that's the shear. And similarly, on these faces, It's, it's a linear variation, okay? And the constant of proportionality is called a coefficient of viscosity. So that this is only valid for a Newtonian fluid. Mu is something we need to enter when we go into fluent, if we are doing, you know, when we're doing viscous flow simulation. So that's something we will do. Similarly, we can look at the normal viscous force and write a relationship for a Newtonian fluid, write a relation, linear relationship between the, the normal viscous stress and the, the, um, the extensional strain, okay? So you can think of this as analogous to that, and that would be kind of an extensional strain, it gives you a sense of the you know, measure of this stretching or squeezing of the fluid particle. Earlier we saw that the net viscous force in the x direction uh, per unit volume is given by the left hand side shown over here. So I can substitute this expression for tau xx in here and this expression for tau xy in here, and I'm going to get second derivatives because I have to differentiate this. And I'll get this form, but to get this form, I have to use continuity, uh, the incompressible form. So I've used du dx plus dv dy is equal to zero to get this form. And then you can write this as mu del squared u, um, where del squared is the, the Laplacian operator. So you get this nice compact form, but that's only valid if you have a Newtonian fluid and you have incompressible flow so that you can use this identity. 
And similarly, you will get the, you know, the, the net viscous force in the y direction for a Newtonian fluid as mu del squared v, lower, lower case v. And if you put it together, you'll get the net viscous force per unit volume as mu del squared v, where v is the vector. So when the nav, when, when, you know, the differential form of momentum is called the Navier-Stokes equations, and when you see that written out, um, you will usually see for, you know, incompressible Newtonian flows, you will see the net, you know, you'll see that term, and you know that that's a net viscous force per unit volume on an infinitesimal fluid particle. So if I go back to F equal to MA, okay, I have looked at the viscous force over here, and I have earlier I looked at the pressure force, so those are the only two forces we are considering here. Let's take a look at the acceleration next. <laughs>